Good evening, this is the Drunken Lawyer, and today we are going to talk about Louis Rodea Cristel, the bottle of 75 that I bought at an auction, you can see it here, and why I bought it. But before we start with that, let's have a look at my little Sherman a Radio Control Toro Pro Edition tank that shoots 90mm bullets made out of uh, steel. As you can see here, you have already seen the other little Toro Pro Edition tank that also shoots 9mm bullets. And when you have tanks like this, always, always, always remember safety first, as you can see on this little picture. But let's uh, start talking about a uh, crystal. As you probably already know, Crystal was made for the Russian Tsar Alexander II in 1876 as he commanded a special uh, cuvée which of course needed to be the best of the best. And uh, as the Russian bought approximately one third of Louis Rodea's production it was an easy request for him to, to make and for them to fulfill. At uh, that time <laughs> 1870s things were complicated for Alexander <coughs> and uh, he commanded that the bottom of the bottle as you can see here was uh, flat which is which, which is still is and he also wanted that the bottle was uh, completely clear hence the name uh, Cristal so it would be easier to see if the bottle was poison and why is uh, that, well, according to the history, the reason for the bottom of the bottle being flat was to ensure that no bombs were placed in the pond beneath the bottles. I'm not sure that's uh, correct, however, it's a great uh, story. And uh, considering how many attempts there were to, to kill Alexander the, the seconds before they finally succeeded, it might uh, as well be correct. Uh, <coughs> if you know about Crystal, many people who, who talk about Crystal says that Alexander II was uh, paranoid, but uh, in fact he was most certainly not as he was a target for several years. And uh, <coughs> let me start by uh, apologizing for my pronunciation of the Russian names in this video as I'm probably going to slaughter them. Already 10 years before the request for, for Cristal, uh, Alexander was tried to, to be uh, assassinated. Uh, that was in 1866 in St. Petersburg by Dmitry Karaskov. Also in 1867 at the World, uh, World Fair, a Polish immigrant, Antoni Beresiowski, uh, tried to, to kill him. Uh, he tried to shoot him with his self-modified double-barreled pistol, but it did not turn out well. The next attempt to, to kill Alexander II was in April 1879 when Alexander Solov, Solovshov tried to assassinate him. He failed as, as the, the prior uh, attempts and he was uh, executed uh, a month later. Unfortunately, Alexander II and the police executed 16 other suspects as well, although they probably had nothing to do with the attempt to kill him. But the Russians, they didn't give up that easily. So in November 1879, uh, he was, uh, there was another attempt to, to kill him by uh, Andrei Shilabov and Sofia Pero Shaiskaya, two members of the so-called uh, People's Will, tried to kill him by bombing his train with nitroglycerin. However, they screwed up and bombed the wrong terrain, so Alexander II survived again. The next attempt 
was also with uh, bombs as uh, the uh, assassins tried to blow up the Kameni bridge in St. Petersburg while Alexander passed. Uh, however, they failed as well. Did that make them uh, the Russian People's Will organization give up? No, it most certainly did not. And the next attempt to kill him was uh, was made by a carpenter, Stefan Karl Turing, who worked at the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, and he was allowed to sleep in the palace area. He used these privileges to smuggle dynamite into the palace, and at the 17th February in 1880, he made a bomb in the cellar under the dining room that he set off at 1830. Unfortunately, Alexander's guest of honor, Alexander at, of Battenberg, arrived later than expected, and therefore Alexander, the two Alexanders actually, weren't near the dining room when the bomb exploded. However, that uh, was not the case for, for many servants and a member of the, the Winter Palace staff, so to speak, so a lot of people were actually killed in this explosion. So you should have thought that that was it, but it was not. And at the 13th of March in 1881, Alexander was killed on his way to the Mikhailovsky Menesh in a closed uh, carriage accompanied by some Cossacks. And as this uh, and uh, this attempt was also carried out with bombs at eventually after throwing three bombs at the, the carriage, uh, the emperor was, uh, was uh, killed. He was not killed uh, instantly, but he died later that, uh, that day where he was bleeding to death with his legs torn away, his stomach ripped open and his face mutilated. And at 3.30 that day, he was dead. So, as you can see, all the stories about Alexander II being paranoid was definitely not true, as he had many reasons to believe that he was wanted dead. And as you can see, finally, it, uh, the assassins succeeded in 1881. Looking at the, the crystal, it was uh, originally a, a sweet wine, which, is, which it is not uh, today. And today the production is around 300 to 400,000 bottles, which is uh, quite low compared to, for instance, uh, Dom Perignon. Uh, who produce uh, millions of uh, bottles. We don't know exactly how many millions of bottles, but it's quite a few. So the production of the crystal is quite limited. Today, uh, crystal is uh, delivered in the gold wrapping. And uh, this gold wrapping has uh, historic roots as in the 19th century, there was a system of color coding to signify a champagne's uh, quality and uh, I assume it's not unsurprisingly that gold was used to denote the highest prestige. But that's not the only reason for this uh, wrapping as the shiny cellophane is actually anti-UV uh, which prote protects the clear bottled wine from, uh, from the sun. So, uh, where you have it. Now, <clears throat> Cristal is, as you probably already know, uh, quite an expensive uh, bottle of champagne. And it's actually quite interesting to look at the prices of uh, Cristal. If we look at some of the latest and best uh, vintages, I will, uh, for this comparison, be looking at the 2008, which is uh, probably the, the best of the, the three vintages that I will be looking at, and I will compare it to the 2002 and the 1986. If we look at the 2008, it scores uh, very, very well, as you can see on this LifeX 
a summary of some of the, the scores. Jim Suckling scores it at 100 points, James Robertson at 19, Antonio Galloni at 99, and William Keeley from Robert Parker scores it at 98 points. If you look at the, the trades on, on this wine, it's been traded several times in the last month. And uh, the la la latest trade for six bottle in uh, zip condition as a standard in bond prices, excluding VHG and uh, duty, is 355.8 euros uh, per bottle. The market price being 345.7 euros according to LifeX and the latest auction price being 316.1 euros. And as I said, the latest trades were 355.8. And this is actually quite interesting if we compare them to the prices of the 2002 and 1996 the 2002 uh, Cristal scores around 66 by William Kelly. Antonia Galloni scores it at 77, James Suckling at 98, Stephen Reinhardt at 98. So it scores, uh, so it has lesser score than the 2008. However, the latest trades on LifeX for three bottles was uh, 399.3 per bottle for the, if you buy three at, at a time. And uh, the latest offering at uh, six bottles was 302 euros per bottle. The last auction price is set to be 488.7 and the market price is 377.5. So, as you can see, the 2002 is actually a lot more expensive than the 2008, although the 2008 is a way better wine, according to the critics. If we look at the 96, we can see Antonio Galloni scores it at 77, Janice Robertson at 19.5, Robert Parker at 95, 97 and uh, Stephen Tenser at 94 plus. The market price according to LifeX is said to be 685.4 euros per bottle. The latest auction price was 637 and the last sale on LifeX was at 28th of June for 521.1 euro for one bottle. Now, this is actually quite interesting as 2008 undoubtedly is the greatest vintage of the three with the greatest score and it's also the, the cheapest in the market for, for now. So that assumes that it's not overpriced and that it has a further potential as the other two, the 96 and the 2002 are still rising in value. If you have a look at my bottle of uh, Cristal, at least with the bottle I have for this video, that's not to say that it's my only bottle of Cristal. This is a 97G5, a wine that scores not so greatly. It only scores 94 by Antonio Galloni. And uh, this is a far from perfect bottle. As you can see, it's very low in the, in the shoulder. So I actually assume that it's flat and dead, but that's also the experiment. What can you expect from a bottle like this? I bought it at an auction for 100, approximately 110 euros, uh, uh, including uh, everything, which is way below the price of a perfect bottle of 1975. If you take a look at a LifeX, the data we can see that for a bottle of uh, this data is from Cristal 75 
Vi kan se, see that the market price is set to see to be 1,335 euros for one bottle. We can see that the latest auction price was 826.8 euros. And if we take a look at the market depth, we can see that it was on offering the 14th of July. Uh, five uh, magnums for 2,457 euros per bottle. It was also listed at the 19th of July for one bottle, uh, 1,351. He actually has two bottles for sale, this, this guy here. And there was also a magnum uh, offered that are listed for 2349.8 euros and these bottles are of course uh, in a very different condition than this one that I bought for 110 euros but you can see the market price is set to be 1335 and I paid 110 so less than 10% of the market value for a perfect bottle. And this, of course, being the experiment, what can you expect if you buy a older bottle of champagne like like this uh, crystal here that has not been stored, uh, I assume, uh, perfectly, and that is very low in the shoulder? Is a bottle like this undrinkable? Is it dead? Is it flat? You can see here, this does not look too promising, not promising at all, actually. Definitely not on this side, this side, um, on, um, on here either. So, in, uh, in many ways, I am quite sure that this bottle is, is dead and I'm not gonna get any great champagne for my 110 uh, euros, but that is also okay. But when well, that will be an, an experiment for, for you to see what what to expect. Is this a completely waste of money if you expect to buy something that's uh, drinkable? Uh, or is it just a fun gimmick to, to have this, uh, this bottle and, and see how it uh, stacks up? But we'll find out in, uh, in the next video. So I'll be signing out. Have a great day and go out and drink some uh, great and exciting wine.